Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Paul. I am a developer advocate at Pivotal Software, and that's a little bit weird because I'm not a developer. I'm a sysadmin who learned just enough Ruby to write some chef scripts. And I'm really not even much of an advocate. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you know my brand is uh, career-limiting tweets, not advocacy. Um, and I'm here today uh, not to uh, praise DevOps, uh, but to bury it. That's some Shakespeare because I am cultured as fuck. Uh, so we used to be we used to be sysadmins, right? Uh, we didn't like talking to people. We played a lot of Halo. Uh, we hand edited send mail CF files, uh, and we definitely did not have. 2008, I think it was. This guy shows up and starts talking about agile infrastructure, uh, and did a birds of a feather session on that topic. And classic Andrew bullshit didn't actually show up to that himself. Uh, and so a year later, we got the. 10 plus deploys per day at uh, Flickr talk by uh, John Allspor and uh, that guy whose nobody, name nobody ever remembers. And they actually almost said DevOps, right? I mean, this is pretty close. Uh, and so we're getting closer to DevOps. It's getting closer to being in the zeitgeist. Uh, a year later, uh, this Belgian dude um, decides to put on a conference. Uh, and he used that creativity that Belgians are known for to take the word developer, the word operation, and the word days and just jam them together and create like the first DevOps days. Now this was in Belgium, and so they drank a shit ton of beer, uh, and they got surly and argued for two days about how to pronounce DevOps, oh, sorry, how to capitalize DevOps. Uh, and they actually never got around to giving DevOps any kind of definition. Um, they would later say that this was, a, this was done on purpose, it was a feature and not a bug, and I'm cool with that because we all know that only terrorists write manifestos. Uh, that left us free to kind of cargo cult DevOps to however we wanted to mean it. So we basically just fired all our sysadmins, except for those of us like me who learned just enough Ruby to call ourselves sysadmins and get like a $100,000 a year pay rise, which was pretty cool. Uh, meanwhile, our vendors were left just to like repackage up whatever the fuck it was they were already selling and call it the DevOps. I'm not sure what IBM is here is saying about uh, how they feel about their customers when they write them dummies books, but I feel like that's another lightning talk for another event. Uh, Amazon comes along and says, yo, those DevOpses are expensive. You can just deploy to our cloud and not do any ops at all. Uh, and so we uh, fired all of our DevOpses and went onto the Amazon cloud and, you know, it didn't necessarily work out as, as well as we thought it would, we would. And we couldn't get our DevOpses back because it all got, like, more rewarding jobs, you know, babysitting chickens instead of babysitting a bunch of broken servers. Uh, and so we were kind of in a bind. Uh, luckily, Google comes along and they say to us, we just invented this new thing that's exactly like DevOps, but it's definitely not DevOps called Site Reliability Engineering. And they not only gave it a definition, they wrote a whole fucking book about it. Two books now, actually. I haven't actually read this book myself, uh, but I've been told that SRE is when you get a bunch of developers to write some software, and then they give it to a bunch of SRE engineers to run that software on Kubernetes. And I think that's, like, we've never tried that before. We've never tried throwing software from one group to another. So I think, you know, we're in with a good chance. But we tried that, and actually it turns out there's more to running complex distributed systems than just like cargo culting a bunch of cloud-native bullshit. Uh, and so Amazon then came along again and said, don't worry, we've got this. Uh, we've got this new thing. It's serverless. Uh, you kind of just give us your code in the form of functions, and it just magically runs in the cloud. Definitely no ops required this time. Now, I, I don't know if you've used serverless before, uh, so if you haven't, like, you take your WordPress application, you get the server, and you throw it away. And that might seem a little bit odd, like, where the fuck is my WordPress running? Well, it turns out you may need to re-architect your application just a little bit. But look how much fucking simpler it is. Like, I mean, take that PHP. And so not wanting to be left behind, Google's like, well, hold my beer. We're gonna, we've got this thing called Knative, and you can run that on top of Kubernetes, on top of OpenStack, inside your own servers, in your own serverless data center. Boom, no ops anywhere. No ops in the cloud, no ops in your data centers. Boom, uh, it's all done. So you're all fired. Uh, we don't need you anymore. Uh, I have uh, collated a list of jobs that you as DevOpsers are qualified to, to do. Uh, I am actually looking forward to my new role as a fortuitous pauper. <laughs>